Hello, 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 everyone. I am Prophet Dr. Dana Reese, the Eagle Prophet Visionary. I want to thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, and I want to ask you to subscribe to this channel so that you can receive future notifications of prophetic words that I'll be releasing for you. And I feel excited because God has given me a powerful word to share with you today. God spoke to me this morning about three things that he is doing for his people in this season. And so this word is for those who are in covenant with God, who walk with God, who are seeking to obey God. And so God spoke to me and he said, in this hour, in this season, people are going to see that God is with you. The enemies in your life who once attacked you or slandered you or who came against you, they're going to back off in this season. And when we go to Genesis chapter 26, this chapter talks about Isaac, how Isaac in um, Genesis 26, 12 had planted crops in that land and in the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. He became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had many flocks and herds and servants so that the Philistines envied him. And so all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines had stopped them up. And so the king of the land was named Abimelech. And he came to Isaac and he said, move away from us. You've become too powerful. So he moved away. They encamped in the valley of Gerar and settled. They reopened wells that had been dug in the time of Abraham. But yet there, there was continuing strife and conflict. And so Isaac's servants dug in the valley and then the herders of Gerar quarreled with them and said the water is ours so they moved they dug another well and they actually got to the third well and no one quarreled over it so they named it Rehoboth saying the Lord has given us room to flourish in the land so Isaac built an altar there and so in the meanwhile King Abimelech had come to him from Gerar with his personal advisor and the commander of his army and Isaac asked them, why have you come to me now since you were so hostile to me before? And they answered in Genesis 26, 28, we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So we said, there ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you that you will do us no harm, just as we did you no harm but always treated you well and sent you away peacefully. And now you are blessed by the Lord. And so as the, the passage goes on, it says that day Isaac's servants told him about the well they had dug. And then they said, we found water and he called it Sheba. And so to this day, the name of the town has been Beersheba. And so we see that King Abimelech who had once in, in, in his land, his, the Philistines had been coming against Isaac, but when they saw that the hand of the God, the Lord, was on him, when they saw that he was still able to produce water in that desert land, when they saw that he, despite their attempts to come against him and to cut off his water supply, that God continued to feed him and to, to provide for him and to bless him, they said, let's make a treaty. So in this hour, God spoke to me to share with you that the people who were formerly your enemies are now going to see the hand of the Lord upon you. They're going to back off. They're going to actually come to you, and they're going to want to make peace with you in Jesus' name. And those who formerly cursed you are now going to bless you in Jesus name in Jesus name in Genesis 27 verse 29 it says many may those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed so those who tried to curse you who tried to come against you in this season 
they're going to see the blessing of God on your life in Jesus name in Jesus name the second thing that God told me to share with you is that this is a season of great victories turnaround and divine reversals the tables have turned the plots of your enemies against you are defeated and you will gain the upper hand over those who hated you victory is defined as an act of defeating an enemy or an opponent in a battle game or other competition it's success triumph conquest superiority and the upper hand and in fact in first chronicles 29 verse 10 we see in the story of jehoshaphat that um, they obtained victory over their enemies through praise and worship they trusted the lord for the victory and then god gave them the victory and so Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. In 1 Chronicles 29.10, the Word of God says, Praise to you, Lord, the God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. So this is the hour of a season of great victories God's glory God's majesty God's splendor is going to rest upon you and you know when God's glory rests upon you everything in heaven and in earth belongs to you in Jesus name Deuteronomy 24 says for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory in Joshua 10, 8, the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. Proverbs 21, 31 says, The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and so let's go to the book of Esther. Esther, in my opinion, is the most powerful book in the Word of God pertaining to divine strategies, pertaining to divine um, victory, pertaining to divine favor and the impact of divine favor and the impact of seeking the Lord and implementing divine strategies. See, Esther was a sharp cookie. She was a woman of wisdom. She was a woman of prayer. She, and as a result, she was a woman of power because she didn't just go into the battle nonchalantly. She sought the, the mind of the Lord when she became queen. And then Haman came against her with a plot to destroy the Jews. Mordecai went to her and said, Esther, you got to go see the king. She she protested for a minute but then she said okay i'm gonna do it but she got the mind of the lord before she went into battle she shifted the battle from the king's palace to where where she was at a disadvantage to the private quarters where she had the upper hand so she shifted the battle she walked into it with wisdom she walked into it with divine timing she walked into it with the favor of God, and as a result, she procured the victory, and her people were saved. Esther was a prophet. She was also an attorney because she was advocating for her people. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Esther chapter 9, verse 1, the word of God says, On the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar, the edict commanded by the king was to be carried out. On this day, the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, but now the tables were turned and the Jews got the upper hand over them who defeated them. I decree and declare that this is the hour where the tables will be turned, where you will have the upper hand over those who hated you in Jesus name 
in Jesus' name. And I prophesy, decree, and declare over your life divine reversals, that the tables have turned, that your enemies who once appeared to be at the head of the table will now be seated at the rear of the table. And this is the season where you will see your enemies cut off and those who previously cursed you will see the blessing of God on your life. I feel the anointing in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. The third thing that God told me to share with you is you're going to see major harvest in this season from seeds that you've planted, even from one, two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen 10, 15 years ago in Jesus' name. And God is going to give you divine strategies and ideas that will initiate and procure the release of those harvests. In other words, there's a divine anointing for prosperity in this hour. This is the season for entrepreneurs. This is the hour to be built, to build. And God said to be bold and to expand. In Isaiah 54, 3, the word of God says to enlarge the location of your tents. Let the curtains of your dwellings be stretched wide and don't hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I want to look up the definition of build means to construct something by putting parts or material together to commission finance and oversee the building of something to establish and develop a business relationship or situation over a period of time or to use as a basis for further progress or to increase the size intensity or extent of because see we're in this hour maybe you built things in the past that fell apart but this is a season to rebuild it again and to rebuild it this time on the foundation of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and divine wisdom. So God told me to release to you there's a territorial anointing for victory and building in this hour. And I want to take you to 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse to in Jesus name in Jesus name we thank you God in this passage God gave David the commission to build the temple but he said you can't build it he said your son Solomon is going to have to build it so God gave David detailed plans to build the temple and so go back and read this I don't have time to read it all today but in first chronicles 28 verse 19 David said, I have in writing as a result of the Lord's hand on me, and he has enabled me to understand all the details of the plan. David also said to Solomon, his son, be strong and courageous and do the work. Be not afraid or discouraged because God is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work of the temple is finished. And then he said, the divisions of the priest are ready and every willing person skilled in any craft will help you. And then in 1 Chronicles 29, the money was released to build the temple. David invested in the temple and also in uh, 1 Chronicles 29, 6, the leaders of the families, the officers came forward and gave money to build the temple. So this is an hour God's going to give you a detailed plan to build. He's going to be with you in the work. And he's going to send help to complete the work. And he's going to send you finances to build it. So I want to ask you to sow into this territorial victory and building anointing for something that God has put in your spirit to build that, if, that God is going to move on your behalf in the next 28 days sow a seed of $128 or $28. If you sow $128, you will receive a prophetic call from me and four videos from my prophetic school of understanding. Go to Prophet Dana Reese on PayPal or Prophet Dana Reese on Cash App. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.